thanks for all uh, for turning up and stuff. So my name's Sean, um, and we're going to do a quick talk on practical ways for extending your website um, with custom fields. So we'll start off with essentially what is a custom field. Um, and custom fields are built into to WordPress core. They're probably something that you may or may not have seen. Um, they can be pretty powerful, but the way they're presented by default in WordPress isn't fantastic. Um, so you can essentially define them as uh, a feature that allows users to add additional information uh, when writing a post or a page, or, um, and then you can easily display that information in your WordPress theme. Uh, why would you want to use a custom field? So when you want to extend the capabilities of WordPress more than just your title and your kind of post editor field. So you may have um, a set of data like a ISBN number or something if you're doing book reviews that you can post across every single piece, um, every post and then that can flow through and when tags and categories kind of aren't really the right, um, the right fit, uh, if you want a consistent look and feel across that, um, you can also add this data to essentially anything. And you can add custom fields to taxonomies, to, to um, custom fields, uh, sorry, to custom post types, to user roles. Um, and the editor can be quite restrictive sometimes as well. So this is what they look like by default. Um, so if you're using this example, right, if you're, the name of the custom field is listening to, and if you're listening to this American Life podcast, that's what you would kind of put in there. So you'd pull out the name and pull out the, um, the default. So it's not a fantastic uh, user interface, but that's kind of how it works. It, it can be obviously extended, um, and that's what we'll be going through today. By default, it, it may or may not be, sh uh, it's usually not shown. So if you go to the top right hand corner and go into custom fields um, in screen options um, there, I don't know if my mouse will show or not, but under screen options, you can then click custom fields and it will show down the bottom. As I said, they don't look fantastic. So um, we'll, we'll look on improving that. So how can we get started? Um, there's a few different options out there on the market. Uh, generally, there's free ones that extend it uh, that will have a premium tier as well. Um, I've done some talks on the past on the solution that I use, but there's, there's quite a lot of solutions out there. Um, so today we'll be going across Advanced Custom Fields, um, which is uh, a free plugin which, which has a, a premium tier as well. So I did a talk probably a year and a half ago about building a custom homepage with advanced custom fields. So if you look on the engineers.sg website, my talk will be on there. Um, it, it also comes with the slides and there's a download to see how the back end works in terms of building that page. Um, so that should be up there as well. And there's lots of other options that can be made. Just if you're looking at that example there, the typical WordPress editor, and, and look, this is pre, uh, Gutenberg, but this is if you're using the classic editor, what you can essentially do is all those are custom fields that you can set. So for your hero area, for example, you might want a background color of green or might want the client or yourself to be able to change that background color, uh, set a background image and then set a title field and things like that as well. So by allowing those additional fields, you can then customize them through a little bit of code. Um, you can also get a little bit more advanced in terms of displaying lots of different types of fields there. So image fields, text fields, number fields, file uploads, the normal WYSIWYG editors, galleries, select boxes, dates, Google Maps, email fields, all sorts of stuff. Um, the premium version of the plugin has a few additional tiers, um, which I'll go through as well. So if you're looking at how it would appear when you're building the fields versus kind of how it appears when you're editing the fields, you would essentially set them up in the back end, like uh, the field group one, which is the dark gray one in the background. And then, so you'd set a thumbnail or an image field, title, date fields, and then description fields. So you'd set all those up. Once those are built, you can then bring them into your, um, into your theme. So as both front end and, and back end. 
setting up the fields first and then entering the data, which then gets stored in the databases post matter. Um, I won't go through too many technicalities around it, but so advancedcustomfields.com is where you can find the free or the premium version of the plugin. Uh, you can also find it in the repository. As I said, the, the Pro has additional fields, repeatable fields, gallery fields, flexible content, which allows you to kind of build your own page builder. It has clone fields and options pages as well. So you may want to set a, an options page across your whole theme or across your whole website and then pull in data from that options page. Um, that can be done with that as well. So the, the plugin price is $25 for a lifetime license for one site or 100, sorry, Aussie dollars, um, which is about the same as Sing. So 25 Sing for a lifetime license all upgrades and things, and then $100 for an un unlimited license. Um, so it's pretty reasonable. Um, has over a million uh, websites on it. So, um, And it, it's always being extended. There's a new version coming out, 5.8, which will allow you to create Gutenberg blocks with ACF data. So it's going to be quite good um, once that comes. And bring down the technical ability in terms of creating Gutenberg blocks without having to know a lot of React and JavaScript. There's also this website, awesomeacf.com, which has over 200 third-party extensions. So some of them are free, some of them are uh, paid extensions. But it will just do things like accordions um, that will already be built in, uh, and, and a whole bunch of other things like collapsible areas and things. So have a look at that as well. Um, Depending on your page builder that you're using, if you're using something like Beaver Builder, uh, it will connect with Beaver Thema. So if you create uh, a header area, you can then pull through the ACF field directly into your editor that way. So I think it has integrations with Elementor uh, and the other ones as well. I'm not 100% sure. So we'll go into some real world examples um, and kind of see how this works for, m generally most of the examples are just client sites to, that I've put that I thought would be useful to kind of show how you can extend WordPress further and, and really build uh, on it and use it more like a CMS rather than a, a traditional blog system which it's obviously been built out of. So if we're talking about building your own directory listing, um, Actually, is this right? Directory listing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so if you're building your own, no, that's right. Anyway, uh, so adding custom user fields. So if you're building any type of directory or membership site, generally you'd be wanting to add some type of user information to the user role. So that may be things like social media profiles, custom uh, avatars. If you don't want to use Gravatar, um, you can just upload your own custom images. Um, Profile information, so if you have multi-user or multi-author blogs, you may want to, to bring out things like occupation, age, phone number, the location of, uh, of where they are. You may have a custom calendar link for booking and things like that. So all this data can be attributed to the specific user themselves. Um, and also you make, uh, you, this example here is, is for a, a lab, so for it's a doctor profile that we're, we're building out at the moment um, for a medical laboratory. So each lab will have their own login and then all these fields will be, uh, you know, will be associated specifically with, the, with that user. So that all that information, that's all ACF information. Um, and you can just pull that out at any time. So just custom fields to set up and then bring it out. If we are looking on how to bring that code out, um, it's a little bit of code here and all this is available on, on the advancedcustomfields.com website, but essentially um, you're pulling through the variable. So that's, you know, your variable equals and then you use get field. So get field and then you call your field name, which could be phone number, for example. And then if you're pulling it from the user, then you use uh, user underscore, underscore and then the ID. So that could be user one, user underscore one, user underscore two, and so on and so forth. Um, 
uh, more of an example here is if you're getting that author's badge and that author badge could be, uh, it's obviously an image. So you're, that's going to be on your, uh, sorry, on a blog post at the bottom of your blog post, you may be, you know, uh, just wanting to display a little image of that, of that author. So that PHP code essentially says the author ID and then find the author badge, you know, uh, user author ID, and then you can echo it out in an image. So you pull through from the array, you pull through the URL and the alt tag um, for that image. And as an example, you can kind of get something that looks similar to that, right? So you have an image that's pulled out, you have their name that's pulled out, and then their bio, bio information. So WordPress has most of this functionality built in. Um, this just allows you to customize it um, so I don't think it comes with Instagram logins, but you can use the Twitter one and rename it. But, um, so you can create those quite easily. Also, um, for creating or extending user profiles. So this is one we built for, for uh, like a job application site. So people could go in and, and adjust their own profiles. So it allows for backend editing for the admin as well as front-end editing as well as forms sending data uh, to it as well. So if we're looking at um, this example here, so this is built so for a profile information. So we have broken it down into, into four different tabs there just for organizing the data a little bit better. Um, so this is for a helper or a made website so they could bring in their own uh, information and seek jobs and things like that. So this is all their data, uploading your photo, upload your CV, upload your video, um, or if there's a YouTube video, there's a link to that as well. And then a description. So they can go through and edit any of that data at any time, both on the, essentially on the front end for the user or the admin can go through and, and check that data and make changes to it. And that's just tied to their login. So on the front end, we just created a, a default look essentially like that. So it's the photo that they've uploaded and their phone number and, and things like that. So. Um, all that display is essentially just using ACF and we've just plugged in an ACF form um, code and it brings through that into the front end. So there's a, a couple of dependencies on that, um, but that can be really easy as well to give your users uh, access to edit their own data where you don't want to give them access to the WordPress admin. Um, you can just redirect them to their own profile page and then they can edit that data on the front end so you never have to worry about it. Um, there's some other things that we did there so you can delete the account and things uh, and you can enter message between users and things. So that's kind of extending the user, uh, the user role, but where we find the most um, flexibility is, is integrating with custom post types. So this may be for something as simple like testimonials so you may want the user's name as the title of the post, their testimonial data in the post content, and then you may want their name, uh, their description, uh, or sort of their job title, their company name, something like that down the bottom, which you could create in custom fields. You can also extend WooCommerce products if you have specific, um, uh, specific fields that are unique to each product, you could do that as well. As I said before, around books, you may have ISBN, you may have ratings and reviews for those. If you're pulling through videos, you can pull through, uh, I've got a couple more examples about videos later, but you can pull through different uh, content around video, embed codes, durations of videos, things like that, ratings, directory listings like map listings and things like that as well, you can bring through. So as a couple of examples here around a travel blog site, um, so this is a travel blog site that we're building at the moment. Um, a lot of data will be stored in custom fields and it's also connected via a gravity form. So what we did is we built all these form fields, ACF form fields in the background. So um, essentially that, that field at the top um, says it's a true or false. So is there, I, is there an travel itinerary attached to it? When did you travel? Look, most of these are just text fields. Um, and there's a couple of number fields and things like that for ratings. Um, so it's essentially structured data that they expect on every post. And then we have a bit of conditional code that says, you know, 
uh, does this field exist? If it exists, then output the data in PHP. This can be done in end page builders and things as well. So um, this is kind of what it looks like in the end. Uh, so traditionally, the WordPress editor, that would be really hard to do with, you'd have to do a whole bunch of div tags and it'd be a real pain to maintain. So with this, you know, the ratings and the intensity and things, that's just a number field. So it's either one, two, three, four, or five, or sorry, zero to four for those ratings and the same for the price. And then on that, we just have a little bit of code. Um, all those six boxes up the top there, if there's data, then they'll display. If there's not data, they won't display. That um, gallery is essentially just a gallery where they dump data into. It takes the first image and displays it um, at the top. The where in the world, um, that's just some code as well. So all that is, is just information that the, the user will put into the form. So it all comes from a gravity form, sits in those custom fields, and then we output it, you know, depending on how they want to. So if we're looking at how it looks um, in gravity forms, which is what we use as our form builder. Um, so we have a whole bunch of, uh, of fields there, mostly text fields that they would do. And then how we've set it up is that it will create a draft post. So this is for people that are getting submissions from from the general audience. It will essentially take all the data from all those fields and we've connected them in gravity forms. Uh, you can see there. So the title will essentially just be an ID number. We'll grab the, bo the body post content. All the images that they upload will be thrown into the media library as well. So they're all connected. And then all those custom fields are all just connected that way as well. So when Whenever they get a new form submission, it goes directly into the right field. They just need to check it uh, and go forward rather than um, you know, having to take data and move it around. So it all gets mapped uh, correctly. You can go and, and publish directly if you want to, uh, but drafts are generally easier when you have user submission. You need some type of moderation. Um, so this is one for 99.co, uh, just another example of their sort of recent blog, which is uh, related posts or recommended posts. So on each of their blog posts, they have this custom fields at the bottom. They have a couple of different settings for them, but one of them is this related posts. So on the left hand side there, there's a selection of all their blog posts, or they can select the taxonomy so they can say all blog posts in property news, for example, select, we've limited it to four, but you know, you could have more than that. And they'll select from the left and drag it to the right. And then those will be their related articles, related posts. As part of that as well. So you see that there's three tabs up there. The first one is image. The second one is MailChimp. Um, and the third one is recommended articles. So the image selector, uh, and we built this to allow them to choose whether or not they want to post to have no image and therefore it's displayed a little bit differently. If they want a left aligned image, it will display like the one with the house there. If they want a right aligned image, it's pretty much the same, just opposite. And then if they want a full width image, it's um, the second most expensive housing market article down there. So that's what it looks like as well. So they can set that per article and that's just a yes, no field. So we do a little bit of code checking in the back end to say, you know, does, is this field that, then output that code that way. And then MailChimp, uh, that just allows for a little bit of tracking. So if it's entered on the, um, we have MailChimp uh, embed code on each of the pages. So they just know where the person has, has entered MailChimp. So uh, if it's District 10, for example, and it's uh, an article about that, then they know that the people have been coming in that way. So it's just a bit of hidden code, but they want to control that um, at their post level. Uh, another powerful area is around videos. So WordPress will traditionally hold videos okay now with o OEmbed. So they generally do that okay, but what we've used it for is for movie and film festivals. And also we have a couple of clients that pull in all their information from Vimeo and we display that out as well. So this is an example of the Sunset Cinema website, which we built um, over the last few years. 
And essentially they're WooCommerce products, each of the films, they have tickets assigned to them. But this is the extra data that doesn't really belong in a WooCommerce product. You know, the date which we use for obviously putting out on the ticket, as well as the timing data. Um, there's a small thumbnail of image. It has the ratings and qualifications and uh, classifications, so, um, as well as the trailer ID. So if you can see there, it's a bit blurry, but it pulls through the YouTube uh, embed code there. We were using the trailer um, inbuilt functionality, but it, it was a little slow when we have, you know, 15, 20 videos on a page. So we're just pulling through the direct YouTube embed code. We found that a little bit faster um, than, than their one. And also there's a description as well. So what it looks like on the live website is essentially that. So um, Green Book is sold out. There's tickets in the next week or so um, to some of the movies, but um, essentially it just pulls through in, into that. So, and it also pulls through into PDF ticket that you'll get if you buy a ticket. All this information gets stored with the product. You get a, a QR code which is generated and you can take that along to the event and they can edit all of that through the CMS so they don't have to worry about coming back to us to add new movies and, and things like that so they can manage it all themselves. Um, this other example here is for a custom Vimeo sync. So what happens, that, um, so they're a TV listing or a TV producer, I guess. So they have shows from around the world that they're looking to sell to other networks and things. So they have a repository on Vimeo. The Vimeo sync essentially happens every day. And instead of just going into random WordPress data, it goes into custom fields, which they can then manipulate. So by default, it pulls through all the information from Vimeo, but if they want to overwrite in that information, they can do in these custom fields here. So if there's a show video description, uh, if that's checked, it shows the default one. If not, they can you know, customize that and they can add things like awards uh, if any of the shows have that. Now, a lot of that data doesn't deserve to belong in Vimeo and it shouldn't, so we've extended it through, um, through WordPress. It pulls through the running time and video durations and things like that all from, from Vimeo. Um, but the additional data uh, can be amended here as well and look pretty basic in terms of how it's presented by default, but then that can be extended as well. Um, directory listings are, are probably the most uh, important, I guess, way that we use it. Because essentially there's a lot of information around events and also around, you know, listings of businesses and things that are, are generally unique um, when we do them. So if we're looking at one that we've set up for, it's actually a, a website called The Minute List and um, our clients have gone around and they've shot one minute videos around restaurants in Singapore, restaurants, bars and cafes. So a one minute video and also uh, a lot of information about the restaurant itself. So I've organized it into tabs, just so it's nice and neat and tidy and my OCD um, keeps me in check there. Um, we're using some repeatable fields as well for different things like um, the different social media links, the different uh, awards that they may have as well. There's integrations in there with Google Maps and I'll show you how that works, as well as gallery and chef information. So. Um, the video is kind of one small part of it, but it gets built out into a pretty big listing um, around a one minute video. So this is what it looks like uh, when you're editing it. So, you know, built out into tabs, the video just contains the video, those booking links there. So those are just the information. So if you are booking, you can do phone, email, there's the, the location data. And if there are booking links through Chope or Deliveroo, or anything like that, they can use those extendable, um, so can use those repeatable fields there. Um, so as you see that little button that says add row, they can just keep adding as many rows as they want there. So it's all neatly organized. And then on the front end, is an example of kind of how that will, will display. So the, the tab that we saw will be up in the top right with some map information. Any award data will be there as well. The photo gallery is just organized into a grid. Um, 
so that's how that is done. Um, one thing that we, we do use and this site uses a lot is the map listings for the restaurant guide. And essentially every video uh, is essentially related to a restaurant. So what we've done is uh, using the Google Maps API, we just put in the, the address. It pulls through the XY coordinates, uh, so the latitude and longitude for those coordinates, and then you can plot them directly on a Google map. So we've used essentially some different colors to categorize. If it's going to be blue, it's a, a bar. If it's brown, it's a cafe. And if it's green, then it's a restaurant. So all those will show um, on there. It, it can be a bit tough when you're working with data in a really small concentration like Tanjong Paga and around the CBD area because you see there's a lot of um, yeah a lot of those pins around that data. Um, generally, if you're looking if you zoom out on this and you look in the map of Singapore, it's pretty empty besides a couple of outliers um, and all, the big concentrations in here. But again, if they wanted to add a new video, they just upload their uh, their YouTube link and fill in the rest of the data and it builds it all for them. Um, and I think finally we'll just go here in, in terms of extending WooCommerce. So what we've done for our client here is built a custom endpoint to store some policy data. So they have some insurance policies that they want people to upload as part of their platform. So we've built these custom fields and you know it pulls through an insurance provider policy type you know and they can just choose that and then as you see down the bottom there um, you can select what different post types that you want this to apply to so it says here post type is equal to policy so those fields will only show on a policy post type so they won't show on a post or won't show on a page but essentially those fields uh, are all built in the back end and then on the front end we also get two different views here so one of them on the left hand side is kind of how it looks to the admin and then the one with the black background is essentially how it looks in the ACF form so it's a little pop-up that comes up and they can edit that data um, and then just kind of add new ones update their policies so it's similar to the helper site that I mentioned before with a custom profile um, just with a really small subset of data. And for them, it's, it just outputs really simply. So a little custom um, section into the WooCommerce My Account section called Pol Policy Custodian. And then users can go up and upload their own policy data. So if we're looking back here and it says, you know, insurance provider is AIA, what we've done is just a little bit of code um, to pull through the, uh, the logo if it matches, so um, that just pulls through. And the rest of the data pulls through there as well. If they want to add a new policy, and this is unique to the specific user when they upload it, it creates a new policy that's assigned to their author, and that's how it's tied together. But they go add new policy, they can you know, add that policy. They can also delete, um, delete download and, and edit any of those as well. So if they click on edit, then you'll get the, the version on the right hand side. If you click add, then you'll get the version on, on the left hand side. And that's all tied that way. So um, that's kind of it from, from me in terms of using them in a practical point of view. I really don't build a website that doesn't have some type of custom fields in it. Um, I just, it's so easy and simple to kind of really extend WordPress and make it a, a really usable um, content management system. So uh, have a think about how you guys can use them and open for any questions if anyone has any. Henry. So you uh, share many examples, right? Uh, let's say you come across a client and they tell you, uh, I I, I run a business like this, or I, I have a website like this, or I want to build a website like this. How do you know uh, if you should be applying custom fees for this person? And also on your last example, you talk about extending WooCommerce, right? How does the 
custom field actually work in WooCommerce? Because it shows just the user profile, right? Yeah, so to the first example, we sit down with most of our clients and go through a two-week strategy session before we really start anything. Um, so we'll know at the start of the project if they need more than pages and posts. So generally, if they need more than pages and posts, they'll need custom fields. Um, or sometimes if they're, doing, if they're you know, producing content like the example that we had around the author profile, generally they'll need a, custom, a couple of custom fields as well. So it's by default it's installed. It may not always be used, but it's part of our plugin suite um, that we've used for years. So I think it, it's a good tool to have, at least the free version. Um, it's not always going to work for every site. Uh, page builders can do a lot of it, but I think where it extends itself really well is instead of building out uh, a visual representation of every field across every, you know, duplicating a row and doing it visually, by adding it in the back end, you can just put a call that comes through and it brings through that data into a template. Um, as for the WooCommerce example, so the WooCommerce example is a little bit strange because um, that data is tied to the user. And what we've done is we've created a new, a new post type that the user creates a new post around. So if they add a new policy, it creates a new policy post type and assigns them as the user or as the author of that post type. So it's like creating a new blog entry, but the WooCommerce admin or the WooCommerce user owns that data. Do you actually use the WooCommerce feature as an as e-commerce feature or just a so this is just as a nice value add for their e-commerce store so they can offer this service to their clients. Essentially, none of that data is really WooCommerce. If we look, so I don't know what happened to that. If we... This, uh, this website, they do actually sell anything? Yeah, they are selling products. This is... The they're not selling policies. No, this is... I'm uploading my own insurance policies so I can keep a repository of them. Um, that's what they've built, yeah, and, and to extend that. And also, uh, just another question, right, for this plugin that you're using, when you enter the policy and what's the you know, insurance, uh, insurer that they're using, right? Yep. Uh, and then it grabs the logo of the insurer. Yep. So does this plugin actually does that? Or? No, that's all custom code. So what it will do is it will just grab the word AIA, and in the FTP, we just have a, a folder with all the logos in it, and it's just called image or logo dash AAA, and we've just got to be a PHP code to to send that out. But yeah, nothing really to do with WooCommerce. Um, the only bit, I guess, would be you know that we're leveraging a custom endpoint that pulls out a custom post type assigned to that user. Um, the WooCommerce integration would really be around around this example, where those are tied to a, a product itself. But if you do have specific sale prices and things like that, you can bring through. Also, if you're asking for additional WooCommerce data, uh, a birthday, for example, for a user, you can bring that through as well. It can be done with some WooCommerce plugins, sure, but it, it all saves in the same database. So whether or not you do it with you know, Word, WooCommerce checkout fields or with something like this, it can be done that way as well. Anyone else? Cool. I will 